What's up, everybody out there in YouTube world, Facebook world, social media world, the world? Welcome to the next episode of Musings with MGL. Today, I'm going to talk about something that really irks me as a as an attorney down here in Florida. I do a lot of defense work. I also do injunctions, so I do domestic violence injunctions. And then, as it relates to the Second Amendment, as most of you know, if you have a domestic violence injunction currently against you, that makes you a prohibited person. You cannot possess a firearm. If you possess a firearm, you will be both in violation of state law because the state law says that you can't possess one while you have a, an injunction. It's also a contempt of court because it's in the injunction that says you can't have it. And it's a violation of federal law because it makes you a prohibited person who cannot possess a firearm. So having a domestic violence injunction against you or restraining order or whatever words they use in different various states is a huge problem when it comes to the Second Amendment because it does prevent you from having a firearm. Now, why is this a situation? Obviously, if you're a, a super violent person and you deserve one of those injunctions or whatever, you know, people can argue about that. I'm a Second Amendment absolutist, as you guys know. So in my mind, there's no comma after shall not be infringed. It doesn't say comma unless some judge somewhere determines that you're a danger to another person. Therefore, you can't have a firearm. So I think it's technically unconstitutional anyway. But I think, you know, I'm in the I'm one of those crazy people who thinks all gun laws are basically unconstitutional. But let's just take this one in particular, even if you think that that person shouldn't have a firearm. The problem with domestic violence injunctions is this, even though they have huge implications on your civil rights, like taking away your Second Amendment right, you're not entitled to a lawyer at one of those hearings. So if somebody goes down and files for an injunction and you get served with it and it gets set for a hearing in front of a judge, you do not get a lawyer. It's not like a criminal case where they appoint a public defender or somebody free to rep represent you. You do not get a lawyer. You go there without a lawyer. You can hire a lawyer. So you are allowed to hire your own private lawyer to represent you. This is where the issue is. You need to hire a private lawyer to represent you in these injunctions for a couple different reasons. Number one, the lawyer can advise you of what all the implications are. I have seen it too many times. I was just in court last week and a guy came in and they were talking to him. What happens is, is there's usually a court personnel that goes up to the person and says, hey, she's here. I'll use she because I'm just going off of statistics. So let's make it easy for everybody. And they say she's here. She wants a an injunction, what do you think? And then the guy says, well, I don't care. I never want to talk to her anyway. So that's fine with me if she gets an injunction. And then the lady says, well, she wants it to be permanent forever. And he says, okay, fine. I don't care. So this guy doesn't want to talk to this woman anymore because he's obviously mad at her in this, this domestic situation that they have. And so he's like, fine, just give me an injunction for the rest of my life. That woman who's talking to him isn't going to explain to him what that means. Nobody's going to tell him that means you can never have a firearm again. It's going to be written in like paragraph 15 in the injunction that he gets. And the judge may tell it to him when she's going through the injunction and telling him what his rights are. But by that point, he's already said he wants to agree to the injunction. and He goes in there and takes it. So you need to have a lawyer so that you understand the implications of having an injunction because you can't be guaranteed that the judge is going to read it to you correctly or go over it correctly. Most of the people in there don't read it themselves because they're angry and hot or whatever. And they say, oh, I don't care. I never want to talk to that bitch again anyway. So I'm fine if she gets an injunction. You can't do that. You got to have an attorney because they're going to explain to you what your rights are. And you don't want to just roll over again. I've seen it dozens of times. People are just angry at the other person and they don't want to have an injunction or they don't want to talk to them anyway. So they say, fine, get an injunction. They don't know what the ramifications are. The other reason you need an attorney, obviously, is because if you're going to fight the injunction and have a hearing, it's a trial. It's basically a hearing in front of the judge. So all the rules of evidence normally would apply in a hearing like that. So things like hearsay, uh, relevance, et cetera, et cetera, the standard objections that you would get, you can make those in that case. If you're unrepresented, you're not going to know how to make those objections. So I've seen it time and time again where maybe the woman comes in with a lawyer and the, and the man comes in without one. And the woman gets up there and says whatever she wants. She can talk about incidents from 10 years ago that aren't relevant. She can say, well, my friend Susie told me that she saw him beat up another woman one time. And if you don't object to things like hearsay and irrelevance, the judge isn't going to do it for you. And this woman's just going to be able to say whatever she wants. And then when you get up there to testify and you want to say, well, my friend Joe told me that she... Their attorney is going to object and say that's hearsay and you can't say it. The judge is going to sustain it. And it's not going to matter that the judge let it in for her and isn't going to let it in for you because they objected and you didn't. So you need to know what the rules of evidence are. And if you go in there without a lawyer, you're going to get steamrolled. And even if even if neither of you have a lawyer, you're still going to get steamrolled because then she's just going to get up there again and say whatever she wants. And you're not going to be able to object. They can come in with pictures and text messages and things that are completely irrelevant or hearsay or not admissible for all kinds of other reasons. And the judge is just going to let it in because you're not making the right objections because you don't know what you're doing. So and again, the major implications come from that. If you lose and you end up getting an injunction for a year, 10 years or God forbid, permanent, 
you're going to have a problem. And the other thing is you need to go to these hearings. A lot of people get those. And once again, they say, oh, I don't want to hear that bitch anyway, so I'm not going to go. And they don't go. And then guess what? When you don't show up, you automatically lose. And then you're automatically going to get a year-long injunction or a permanent one injunction. You, you have no say in what's going to happen. So, for example, I was in court the other day, and the woman filed for an injunction. And she said she only wanted it for a year. And the judge basically talked her into a permanent one because she's like, well, you never know what's going to happen in a year. Things may be differently. Are you sure you only want it for a year? And the woman says, well, how long can I get it? Well, I can make this for the rest of your life. And she says, okay, I'll take that. So here was a situation where a woman was just going to get a year and she ended up getting a permanent one because, you know, the judge basically, I don't want to use the phrase, talked her into it, I guess, but the judge told her about it. And then she ended up getting an, an injunction for longer than she wanted. So you got to go to these hearings as well. So if you ever get served with an injunction, don't ignore it. Don't go there and just agree to it. Go hire a lawyer, have them review it. They may be able to win your hearing at, at, at the, at, they may be able to win it at the hearing and get it thrown out. You can also negotiate limited time. So for example, if it's a hot situation where people are mad at each other, you can go to court and instead of that woman coming over and saying, oh, well, will you take it for the rest of your life? You can say no, but it'll take it for six months. That way he can move, she can move. And then after six months, it automatically goes away and then you're no longer a prohibited person. So having a lawyer in those situations is very important. So when it comes to domestic injunctions, you need to do something with those. Don't just get mad because you're angry at the woman and you figure, what's the big deal? I'm never going to see her again anyway, because those things will have huge ramifications on your second amendment and they'll cause you a problem for however long the injunction exists so make sure you protect your rights the only way to do that is to hire a lawyer and it's not just because i am a lawyer and i want you to hire a lawyer and pay people money i'm doing it because you need to protect your rights because nobody's going to give you a free lawyer and if you go in there without one you could come out in a world of hurt so thanks for watching today like subscribe share comment down below if you want to ask questions if you want to i'll be more than happy to respond to them and uh tell everybody at my channel i'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers i really appreciate it so that's all for today i'll see you next time in the meantime stay safe stay vigilant wait stay safe stay healthy stay vigilant and as always carry on